Here's the million dollar question. Which is more important, the idea of strategy push or technology pull? What comes first or in what percentage? And I often ask business leaders this in, in the classes that we do. How much of our efforts should be spent on strategy and how much should be spent on technology? And then what is the reality? How much are we actually spending on technology, which naturally is disproportionately larger, massively larger than the amount that we're spending on strategic planning? Go back to the first slide. Strategy is where we create competitive advantage. People and a culture of innovation sustain it. Technology and communications are the means by which it's delivered. So we spend substantially more on the delivery than we do both time and cash than we do on the strategy planning. So going around the room in many of the events that we do, we start to ask ourselves, is it all strategy push? Should the strategy be really saying to the technologists, here's what I want you to deliver technologists? Or do we have to take inspiration from the technology? Usually without the explanation, which is about to follow, when I ask this, it turns out that most people say, the strategy pushes 70, 80% of what we should be doing. And we should really, as leaders, be being inspired by a technology pull, maybe 10, 20% of the time. The problem with that is that when you take this quick example, which is in our AI, our artificial intelligence training video, and you'll see that this can sway your opinion. In an artificial intelligence environment, we were working with a, a company that is in manufacturing. We were able to take data and insights as to which is the best product, aluminium or composite material. We put it into an AI engine and out from it came the, it was a decision tree. The decision tree allowed us to say, is it best that we have higher quality materials, more durable materials, lower cost materials, lower weight materials, um, less flammable materials, and all of these uh, questions that we were able to ask, we were able to get the answers in about a day from an AI system that had a vast amount of data put into it. And it was an unbiased uh, outcome that, that came rather than the outcome that the engineers wanted or the R&D professionals wanted. It turns out that the solution reflected very closely what the R&D team had spent several months coming to the same conclusion. So the problem with that is not that the AI solution is now able to do something faster than R&D, it's that if we can do the R&D that quickly, what do we do with all these people in R&D? By the way, our procurement needs to say that we need to be able to buy more composite materials, but we don't have procurement set up right. We don't have the people on the machine floor tooled correctly. And we can find this out in 24 hours. How are we ever supposed to create a strategy that is unaware of the impact artificial intelligence will have on our business and the impact it will have on production, on HR, on R&D, on every facet? How are we supposed to plan a strategy when we don't know what this technology does? So I'd ask you again, if I were to put a percentage sign besides strategy, a percentage sign over technology pull, what would yours be? Usually, here comes the answer. Usually the answer then shifts from 80-20 down to 60-40 in favour of strategy. More people would say we still need to be spending more time on strategy. Strategy is where we create the competitive advantage. And when we look at most business leaders and ask them, well, are we spending this amount of time on strategy? The answer is no, because they think the, the strategy has been con being confused with the vision and not the diagnosis. The leader's role is to lift the barriers that the managers and the operations people are coming upon when they see a problem. They have to make the connections, make it work across multiple divisions in an organization so that the innovations can happen. And they still need to understand what has to happen with the technology. So while I say the, the leadership needs to understand technology, I mean it in the sense that you need to understand that a vehicle drives and here's how you drive it, but you don't even need to know that there is a combustion engine under the hood. You don't need to know the tire pressure requirements. You don't need to know how a gearbox works. You just need to know how the vehicle takes you from one point to the other and what that means. Without that, you can't really define strategies in, in any meaningful way.
What we find is that businesses go through this kind of journey. They're doing digital. They're doing digital meaning that they have their website, their social media, all of those links are up there. Then what happens, they realize that it's not moving the needle in terms of competitive advantage. So they become digital adapters. They take on more products and services and technologies and they try to plug them in in some form of ad hoc style innovation. But the true performers, the ones that really make the big difference are those that have digitally transformed their mindset, understand where they're going and have got very specific details around where those innovations need to take place, the amount of strategic review that needs to be constant and ongoing, how they're going to do that using data. We'll be covering all of this in the planning section. Don't panic, I'm not telling you something and they're not making the big reveal later on, but you need to have the mindset in the organization that this is an operating model that we wish to adopt. And it does require quite substantial change. Those that change, however, are the ones that tend to succeed. That's why the promotion of digital transformation is so popular at the moment. Thanks for watching.